Welcome to part one of this tutorial series. We will be going through references. So using references is key to achieving a solid result. It doesn't really matter what type of art form you're working in. You kind of always need a reference. So before modeling anything, you need solid references. If you don't have enough references, you will start making up portions of the model and it might not look good. Coming up with your own design ideas is pretty hard, especially if you're doing it on the go and maybe if you aren't experienced either. I'm not saying that coming up with spontaneous ideas is bad. However, make sure that the key elements of your model are inspired by actual design references, or at least have it planned out to some degree. So what makes a good reference? In my opinion, a good reference sheet shows my subject or object from all necessary angles, distances, and lighting situations. Let's drift off to character modeling. In order to model an accurate face of a person, you need to understand the shapes of the face, which can be split up into primary, secondary, and tertiary shapes. And what draws the shapes in our photos, paintings, or renders? Light and shadows. So when I want to understand the face of somebody as good as possible, I will try to find as many different lighting situations as possible. A very ideal reference for my shapes are ones with more contrasty lighting. A flat lighting does not do a good job at revealing my shapes. So we can kind of apply this logic to our hard surface models as well. We generally want references that show our object from every possible perspective, and we also want to see it in different lighting situations, since different lighting situations can reveal different properties of our model. You don't always have exact dimensions of your model, so it's very useful if you can, based on the lighting, judge how deep an extrusion maybe is. However, this is not all there is to references. We also need more objective reference that shows us the true dimension of our shapes. For this Millennium Falcon, I was able to find some top, down and side references. And these references are very helpful guides in the beginning when creating our base shape. So how do we organize this in our head? So especially for hard surface models, we have two types of references. The first being our dimension references. These types of references are very objective and they show the true scale of things. The second type of references would be the style references. Those help with creating everything that is not documented on any dimension reference. It's sort of the type of details that you just eyeball. You kind of guess from the image how big it is. You guess from the lighting how steep an extrusion would be. So in terms of software, you can theoretically use anything that is able to display your images say Photoshop, GIMP, Krita, Clip Studio, whatever it is, they're all fine. However, there's this software called PureRef and it's specifically made for this purpose, hence the name PureRef. So when you start PureRef, which by the way is free to download, the link will be in the description. Um, as soon as you open this, you will be greeted with a floating window, which looks pretty empty and not very interesting. However, let's say we want to drop in some images. So we're going to open a Google images and we're going to copy a few images. You can right click and copy and you can just press control V and paste in your images. And yeah, so first of all, this is very handy. You can just easily paste in your images. The program is very snappy. You can pan around by pressing middle click You can also zoom by scrolling. And you can also resize and rotate your images, which is very nice. So you can sort of realign them. So if you have a lot of references, you can scale them however you want. You can group them. You can even make uh, fields with text in it. Um, but one particular feature that I find very nice is that PureRef can always stay on top of all the other windows. That means if you have Blender, Substance Painter, whatever it is, if you have it open and you want to stay pure ref on top of that software, even if you are working in it, then that's the feature for you. So you right click, go to mode and check always on top. If I press always on bottom, it's going to be always at the bottom. Awesome. We took our first step to creating a giant spaceship in Blender. If you want to recreate the Millennium Falcon as well, I will provide you with my reference sheet in the description. However, I would prefer if you guys would model whatever you want to model. This is not a step-by-step -step copy paste tutorial. We actually want to learn here and you can best do that by applying the learned information onto your own model. Two, two, two.